Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, I'm gonna show you a full build using the Edge series of Ubiquiti equipment. What I'm gonna be using is the Edge Router X, the Edge Switch 10X, and a Unify Lite AP. Ubiquiti is still releasing firmware updates for these devices and they are great for a home lab. This will be the same as all my other small business setups. We're gonna create some subnets and firewall rules as well. If you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks and we have a Discord server, which I'll put in the description below. So this is our topology here. We have our internet coming into port four of the Edge Router X. Then port ETH zero is going into port one of our Edge Switch 10X. On port eight, we have a Unify APAC light connecting and port eight on the switch is PoE, so it should power it up. The subnets that we're gonna create are the admin, staff, guest, and IoT, and they're all gonna be class C subnets. So we'll have 254 working host. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get the Edge Router X internet connectivity. And by default, the IP address on the Edge Router X is 192.168.1.1. We need to make sure that our PC is in that subnet. So I'm gonna to go to Open Network and Internet Settings. I'm gonna to go to Ethernet and then Change Adapters. Here we're gonna to wanna to locate our Ethernet adapter and right click, press Properties, scroll down and then go to IPv4 and then hit properties again. Then we're gonna to wanna to use the following IP address. So you could use any IP address in the range of that subnet. So I'm gonna put in 192.168.1.100 with a 255, 255, 255, And the gateway will be 192.168.1.1. And we'll press okay and close. Now, if we bring up a command line, we should be able to hit the Edge Router X router interface. And you can see we're getting ping replies from the Edge Router X, so we could go to the GUI of the Edge Router X now. So I'll open up a Chrome browser, and we'll go to 192.168.1.1, and we'll advance, and then proceed. So by default, the username and password is UBNT, and we'll log in. Now it's asking, router is in default config, do you wanna start with the basic router, uh, wizard? We'll say yes. The first thing it asks us for is our internet port, and we're gonna be using ETH4. So I'll go down to ETH4, and I have a static IP, but if you're using DHCP, you would select that. PPPoE, you would select this interface. I'll put static IP, and I'll input all my information. Next, we're gonna to wanna to change our LAN port interface IP address range. As in our diagram for admin, we're using 192.168.10.1. So we're gonna switch that to 10.1. And we're gonna enable the DHCP server. Under user setup, I'm gonna create a new admin user. I'll just call it Mac Telecom and then create a password. And then we're gonna press apply and this will reboot the Edge Router X and then we'll have to get back to it on the 192.168.10.1 address. So I'll press apply and then we'll apply the changes and we'll reboot. So while this is rebooting, we're gonna to wanna to put our network adapter back to DHCP. So I'll right click on my network adapter, open network and internet settings, go back to ethernet, change adapter options, go to my adapter and right click, properties and then IPv4. Here we're gonna just obtain an IP address automatically and same with DNS and press okay and then close. And now if we open up a command prompt and go IP config, we're getting a address out of the 192.168.10 subnet. So we could go back to our web browser and go 192.168.10.1. We're just gonna hit advanced and then proceed. So now this is gonna be our new username and password that we created. And this is the Edge Router X interface. So you can see all our interfaces in a switch zero. This switch zero is what's gonna do all our inner VLAN routing. The first thing that we'll do is create all of our networks and VLANs. And the first one we'll start with is, is our staff. So I'll go to add interface, add VLAN. And then here I'm gonna add VLAN 20. The interface is gonna be our switch zero. And then under IP address, we're gonna manually define an IP address. I'm gonna give it 192.168.20.1 slash 24 and press save. 
Now you can see that interface is created below here. Now we need to add the guest. So I'll add VLAN and that's gonna be 30. And then the interface is gonna be switch zero and we'll call this guest. The IP address, we're gonna manually add it at 192.168.30.1 slash 24 and press save. And the last VLAN that we're gonna create is the VLAN 40, which will be our IoT. So this it will be interface will be switch zero, description IoT, and then manually define an IP address of 192.168.40.1 slash 24, and we'll press save. So now all those interfaces are created. We need to give each one of these subnets a DHCP server. So we'll go up to services. I'm gonna add a DHCP server. The DHCP name will be staff. And the subnet will be 192.168.20.0 slash 24. The range I'm gonna start it at is 192.168.20.10. And the stop will be 192.168.20.200. My router will be 192.168.20.1. That's the router virtual interface. And DNS, I'm just gonna give it Cloudflare and then Google. And we'll press save. Now we have to create DHCP servers for our other two remaining networks. So this one will be guest and the subnet 192.168.30.0 slash 24. And we're gonna do the start and stop range the same for each one of these subnets. The router for this will be 192.168.30.1 and the same DNS will apply for DNS one and two. And the last DHCP server we have to make is our IoT network which will be 192.168.40.0 slash 24. The router will be 192.168.40.1. DNS will be the same. Okay, so now all our DHCP servers are created. We need to go ahead and plug a network cable from ethernet zero down to port one of our switch. So I've now plugged in the switch to our router. We're gonna to go to dashboard and we need to allow ethernet zero to trunk to our switch. So how we do that, we need to go to switch zero, go to config, go to VLAN, and then we need to make this VLAN aware. So we only have it VLAN aware on ethernet zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck the rest of these and press enable. The VLAN IDs that we want to go across are 20, 30, and 40. So we'll put that in with commas in between and then we'll press save. Next, we need to go to our edge switch 10X. So to find the IP address, we could go to service. We could go under our LAN and then go to view leases. And here we could see this is my desktop and then 192.168.10.39 is my switch. So we'll put that into a browser. And I already logged in with the default UBNT, UBNT, and then it's gonna force you to create a new password. So the old password is UBNT, and then you wanna put in a new password. And this is the dashboard for the Edge Switch 10X. We can see we have activity on port one and port three. My computer's plugged into port three right now. And port eight is where we're gonna be plugging in our Unify APAC light. The PoE is currently off, we're gonna turn it on. Now we'll go over and create our VLANs within our switch. So we need to click here where it's for VLANs, and then we're gonna add new VLAN. So we're gonna add VLAN 20, add VLAN 30, and then we'll add VLAN 40 and we could give names to all these VLANs. So I'm gonna name this one staff. VLAN 30 will be guest. And then VLAN 40 will be IoT and we'll press apply. So by default, all of VLAN one is untagged and then every other port on here, every VLAN that we created is excluded. Since we know that port one on the switch is a trunk port, we're gonna leave the default as untagged then we're gonna tag our other three VLANs. So 20, 30, and 40. We're gonna tag and then press apply. So this will allow us to be able to put the VLANs on any one of these other ports. And if we plug into there, we'll get an IP address from one of the VLAN subnets. So if we wanna put port four on the staff network, we're gonna leave that untagged. And then we're gonna exclude the default one and press apply. So I'll plug my computer into there and we should get an IP address from 192 168.20.1 subnet. Now, if we go to a command line and type in ipconfig, we should see that I'm getting 
20.10. So another port that we need to make a trunk port is port eight because this will be having all of our wireless networks on it, native VLAN one untagged, and then we're gonna tag the rest of the VLANs and press apply. The next thing we need to do, we need to get our Unify AP AC Lite into a controller and then create some VLAN only networks and some wireless networks. So I have a local controller and I'm gonna go over to the Unify Network tab. And if we go over to devices, we'll see that the UAP AC Lite is pending adoption. So I'll click on that and then we'll adopt. And while this is the adopting, we could create our VLAN only network. So I'll go over to settings. We'll go to networks and then we'll create new network. So the first one will be called SAF. And this will be VLAN only and we will give it a VLAN tag of 20 and press save. Next will be guest, which will be on VLAN 30. And our last one will be IoT, which will be on VLAN 40. Now we wanna go ahead and create wireless networks for each one of these VLANs and we'll go to wireless networks, create new wireless network. First one will be staff, WPA personal. So I'll just put in a password of test one, two, three, four. And then we need to select our network. So this network right here, this actually means VLAN. So we need to select staff and then press save. We'll create a guest network. So we'll call it guest WPA personal of test one, two, three, four, and we'll select the VLAN of guest. And the last one will be our IOT network. WPA personal, and we'll put in a password and then select the network of IOT and save. Now the access point is done provisioning, we should be able to connect to one of these Wi-Fi networks and get an IP address from their subnet. So I'll go down and I'll select the guest network that we just created. I'll go to guest and press connect. Put in the password of test one, two, three, four and press next. Now if we bring up a command prompt, we should be getting an IP address from the guest subnet, so IP config. And you can see here that we're getting an IP from 192.168. 30.10. So the next thing we need to do is create firewall rules. As it stands right now, all inner VLAN routing is allowed. So I'm on the 192.168.30 network. I could ping 192.168.10.1. And that's the interface of our edge router X. I could ping 20.1 and 40.1. We could also hit our switch, which is at 10.39. So we need to block out all of this communication and how we do that is by doing firewall rules. So we'll go back to the edge router X and then create these rules. Now we need to create firewall rules so that there's no inner VLAN routing allowed. So the first one that we'll do, we'll add a rule set and we're gonna call this guest in. I'm gonna accept and then we'll press save. So we need to make a firewall group to cover all of our private IP addresses. So I'll go to firewall and NAC groups and we'll go to add group. So the group name I'm gonna put is RFC 1918, and it's gonna be an address group, and we'll press save. We're gonna to go to actions and then config, and we're gonna add the RFC 1918 addresses. So the first one will be 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Second one will be 172.16.0.0 slash 12. And the last one will be 10.0.0.0 slash eight, and we'll press save. So we'll go back to our firewall policies, click on the guest in rule, and then go to edit rule set. We're gonna add a new rule, and then I'm gonna call it block inter VLAN routing. The action is gonna be to drop, and the destination is gonna be that new group that we created of RFC 1918. And we'll press save and then we'll save our rule orders. Now we need to select which interface it will go in. So we'll go to interfaces and the guest interface is our switch 0.30 and the direction is gonna be in. And I'll press save. Next, we need to create a rule for the staff in. So we'll add rule set and we'll call it staff in. And we're gonna accept as the default action and press save. We're gonna go and we're gonna edit the rule set and then we're gonna add a new rule. So this will be the same block inner VLAN routing and we're gonna drop it. The destination will be the RFC 1918 and we'll press save. Save rule order and then exit. 
Last one will be our IOT. The action will be to accept and we'll save that. Then we have to select our, our interface for the staff. So we'll go to interface. We'll select switch 0.20 because that's our staff sub interface. And then we'll select in as the direction and save rule set. Now we have to create a rule set for our IOT in. The action will be accept. We'll go to actions, edit rule set, add a new rule, block inner VLAN routing. It will be to drop and the destination will be the RFC 1918 and we'll save. Now we could go over to interfaces, select the IOT switch 0.40 and direction will be in and we'll save. All right, so now our inner VLAN routing is blocked. We need to be able to block the router interfaces as well. If we are on the guest network, we would still be able to hit the 30.1, the 10.1 and the 20.1. So we need to create some local rules for that. So we'll go add rule set. This will be called staff local. And the default action will be drop. So we'll go to the staff local and we'll edit a rule set. So we need to allow this to be able to get D DNS and DHCP. So the first rule will add a rule and we'll, it will be allow DNS, which will be accept and then it will be on both TCP and UDP. And then our destination port will be 53. And then we have to allow DHCP. So we'll go allow DHCP. We're gonna accept that traffic in UDP and the destination port will be 67 and press save. Now we have to select our interface for the staff network, which is our dot 20. And then the direction will be local and we'll press save. Now we have to create those same rules for our IOT and our guest network. So we'll add a rule set and we'll go guest local default action drop. We'll go to edit rule set, add new rule, allow DNS, accept on both TCP and UDP and then port 53. Add another rule for DHCP. We're gonna accept on UDP on port 67. And then our interface is gonna be dot 30 and then local and save. And the last one we need to create is IOT local. We're gonna edit the rule set, add allow DNS on port 53, allow DHCP on port 67 and then our interface is going to be the dot 40 and local and we'll save the rule set all right now our, all our rule sets are created i'm going to hop over to the guest network and make sure that inner vlan routing isn't able to go through as well as us being able to hit the gateway so now we're connected to the guest network we'll go ip config and we can see that we're on the 192.168.30 network i'm going to go ahead and try to ping the switch at 192 168.10.39 and we can see that the ping requests are timing out. I'll try to hit the gateway of 192.168.10.1 and those are timing out as well. Same with 20.1 and 40.1. So this is a basic setup using edge equipment. We've created some VLANs, we've created networks, we've created DHCP servers, firewall rules, and wireless networks. If you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.